tradition of our city. I hope all of you enjoyed your Easter celebration, for those of you that celebrate Easter, and for those of you that celebrated Passover, I hope you also enjoyed your Passover holiday. This week around the city of Elizabeth, on April 22nd at 6 o'clock, the Elizabeth Home Improvement's first time home buyer event will be held in city council chambers on the third floor of city hall. The program will include representatives from Brandon Day, will provide information for residents about buying a home within a budget as well as schedule a tour of foreclosed homes in our city. The program will provide support and guidance for those individuals who decide to make an offer on a house and for more information to register for courses, please contact our Elizabeth Home Improvement Program at 352-8450 or a brand new day at 282-0781. On Thursday, April 23rd at 9 o'clock, the City of Elizabeth and New Jersey Clean Communities will celebrate 2009 Earth Day. It's a cleanup event and as part of the day's activities, cleanup teams from the community will have a given area of the City of Elizabeth compete for this year's Golden Groom Awards. It will begin with registration in front of City Hall at 9 o'clock in the morning and will conclude at 1 o'clock with a luncheon at Amber Court on 1155 East Jersey Street. And at 10 o'clock, the third and fourth grade students at St. Genevieve's will host their science fair, something I look forward to every year, and they'll demonstrate extraordinary hands-on science experiments that they have been working on for months. The event will be held at St. Genevieve's School on Princeton Road in our city. If you want more information, call 355-3355. And also that evening, the art and music reception at the Altenburg Piano House at 1150 East Jersey Street, musical performances and art displays from the Elizabeth Arts Council and local artists. Light refreshments will be served. If you need more information, call 355-9600. And on Friday, April 24th, the annual Future City Incorporated Environmental Day event. Students from various schools in Elizabeth will learn from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Coast Guard, and various other organizations about our environment and our waterways. It'll take place at the Elizabeth Marina on Front Street in Elizabeth, and this event is the culmination of a week of Earth-friendly initiatives citywide. It'll also be the subject of this evening's show. On Saturday, April 25th, Elizabeth Portugal Day Committee and the Elizabeth Police Department celebrate their annual Family Fishing Day picnic. This event is held at Wanico Park, Registration for the Fishing Derby begins at 10.30. The contest begins at 11 o'clock. Poles and bait will be provided for all participating. There will be food, music, and prizes. For more information, call Jennifer Costa at 732-925-4382. The Families United Community Gathering on Immigration at the Jesus is Lord Church on Spring Street will also be held on Saturday at 11 o'clock. It will raise awareness for the advocate of new legislation toward comprehensive immigration reform. Invited guests include our Senator, Robert Menendez, the Congressman from Elizabeth, Javi Osiris, and Congressman Luis Gutierrez from Chicago. For more information, call 732-249-0400. And also that afternoon, the Tenants Association of Fort Leonard Towers will have their 42nd building anniversary party. Food and music by DJ Gene Dino, located at 69 Division Street. The United Youth Council that evening will have their Martin Luther King Jr. 26th Annual Community Awards Banquet. Honors such as the Merit Humanitarian Awards, along with 20 other awards will be given out. This event is at the Hilton Hotel on Spring Street in our city. And the 13th annual Run for Children will be on next Sunday at April 26th. This year's proceeds go to the Union County Child Advocacy Center and St. Clair's Home for Children in Elizabeth. It will kick off at Union County College in Elizabeth and finish on the steps of the Elizabeth City Hall. For more information, call 820-4238. Also that afternoon, the Stand Up for Cancer Talent Show will be held at the Portuguese Destructive Social Club. It's on Grove Street in our city. The proceeds will benefit Trinitas Regional Medical Center. For more information, call 242-0687. And under the Safety Lou 
high priority projects in the surface transportation reauthorization legislation, the City of Elizabeth will submit a project request for funding to implement and replace antiquated intersection signalization, signalization in Elizabeth. The RAISE initiative that we're calling will improve traffic signalization at approximately 50 locations or more to address traffic flows and improve the overall transportation throughout the city. It is the intent of the City of Elizabeth to hold a public hearing to further discuss this project, anticipating funding for this project in the amount of approximately $12 million. It will be requested through the Office of Congressman Payne and Congressman Series. The bill will begin in the House of Representatives. The Business Administrator will announce this endeavor as well at the pre-meeting conference of the City Council on April 22nd of 2009. If you need more information concerning these events, or any other events, please call our Public Information Office at 820-4124. And for this week's show, I'm pleased to be joined by Ms. Lisa Barron of the Army Corps of Engineers. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And John Domashevitz of Future City. Welcome to the show, John. Thanks, Mayor. I get to see you two every year. And every year we talk about Future City and hosting an Earth Day project in our city. And Lisa, you're going to talk with us a little bit about your agency's participation. You're the project manager for the Comprehensive Restoration Plan that is being developed for the entire Harbor Restoration that we see here. And I'm also going to be pleased to share the details of the Restoration Plan in the second half of our show. And John, Future City has been on our show and we'll discuss your organization's role as well. So John, we'll start with you. Tell us about Future City and Earth Day 2009. Future City, for the past 10 years, has been working with the community in Elizabeth and advocating for citizens on behalf of many environmental and health-related issues. One key resource for health and a safe uh, environment is water. So we have done significant work in clean water activities, and inclusive of that is working with the public schools, and as well as the private schools, to educate students and their communities, their teachers, about the importance of the Elizabeth River, the estuary, and certainly the work that agencies like the Army Corps of Engineers and EPA and various other organizations like the Coast Guard play in their daily lives. So we, we're pretty proud of that record of, of work. It seems like Earth Day has become very popular, so we're very happy that that has happened. We think we've been out in front of that wave of popularity quite a bit since we've been doing this for about 10 years. Now John, your background, you teach this subject matter at Kane University, correct? Yes. Maybe you can tell our viewers a little bit about your background and what you teach over there as well. Yes, I teach in the Department of Geology and Meteorology. I teach courses in watershed uh, resource management and certainly the scientific side. Many of the students aren't too happy with some of the math that goes along with that. But we continue to work to make sure that the university is a viable place for our constituents. The, the students in the Elizabeth public and private schools, we are a great resource for them. And the more we can promote math and science careers, we know that that's a great need in this country, certainly in this region. So that's also part of what I do through work with Future City, is to not just teach the students who will eventually make it to college, but to make sure that students pre-college, see what's going on, see the opportunities, know that math and science is something that they can do because they're interested in it, but they don't always see it as a viable career option. And Lisa, the Army Corps of Engineers has uh, been active in the New York Harbor for many years, and the city of Elizabeth did a flood control project many years in our, in our city. Uh, tell us about your role with the Army Corps of Engineers, and especially New York Harbor, and how it relates to what you do every day. Sure. Well, just from a historical perspective, the Corps has been around for many, many years, and you know, obviously the, the uh, estuary has, is naturally shallow, about 19 feet historically. And so in order to bring in the ships and make this a viable port, since this is the port of New York and New Jersey, third largest in the United States, largest in the East Coast, we need to, we need to dredge the harbor and keep the channels open so that we can bring in the containers and all the, all the products that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. 